Welcome to our deep dive. Today we're exploring the counties of Ireland, and we're going to be doing it in a slightly uh, unexpected way. Yeah, a little unconventional, perhaps. Exactly. We're using a children's coloring book as our guide. This Love Ireland coloring book is designed to teach kids about the counties while they color. But as we'll see, it's packed with some really interesting tidbits for adults, too. All right. So Ireland has 32 counties in total. That's right. 26 of those counties make up the Republic of Ireland. Yeah, the other six. Those are in Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. Ah, so that's where the split comes in. So within the Republic, how are those 26 counties organized? Well, they're grouped into four provinces, Leinster, Munster, Connacht, and Ulster. Ulster. That sounds familiar. It is. Ulster is actually a bit unique because it spans both the Republic and Northern Ireland. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. given the history there. So our coloring book gives us a few key facts and attractions about each county. Let's start with Dublin. It's the capital. And the book mentions Dublin Castle, Trinity College, and the Guinness Storehouse. All very popular tourist destinations. Yeah, pretty standard stuff, right? Well, true. But let's not underestimate them. Take the Guinness Storehouse, for example. It's not just a brewery tour. Oh, so it's more than just a pint of Guinness. Watch more. It's a symbol of how important brewing has been to Ireland's economy for centuries. You're right. Guinness is a global brand. Exactly. And its roots are right there in Dublin, intertwined with the history of Ireland itself. Okay, I'm seeing this coloring book in a new light already. What's next? Well, next up we have Cork in County Cork, which is known for its food scene. The book mentions fresh seafood and cheese. Yeah. And there's a good reason for that. Cork is on the coast, and it has a long history as a major trading port. So that's how all those delicious flavors got there. Exactly. You'll find incredible seafood there, but also a really interesting blend of international flavors and local produce. So it's more than just fish and chips. Oh, much more. Think about it. Spiced beef is a traditional Christmas dish in Cork. Spiced beef. Hmm. I've never had that. It's delicious. And the tradition dates back centuries. Wow, okay. So what about some of the other counties? What does the coloring book tell us about those? Well, let's look at Connacht. The book shows it as this wild, beautiful region with lots of wilderness and national parks. Like Connemara and Ballycroy. Yes, exactly. Connacht has this amazing, rugged beauty, and you often feel like you're stepping back in time when you visit. In what way? Well, the Irish language and traditional way of life are still very strong there. So it's a bit different from the hustle and bustle of Dublin. Definitely. Think dramatic landscapes, ancient ruins, and a deep connection to Celtic mythology. And then there's Galway, also in Connacht. The book mentions it being famous for its festivals. It is. Galway is known for its really lively atmosphere, and the festivals are definitely a big part of that. So it's all about having a good time. Well, it is about that, but it's also about something deeper. Okay, I'm intrigued. What do you mean? Well, think about it. Even in our coloring book, the Galway page shows traditional musicians. So you're saying it's not just about partying, it's about connecting with Irish tradition. Exactly. That's a thread that runs through the whole country, really. I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay, so we've talked about Leinster, Munster, and Connacht. What about Ulster? What does the book highlight there? Well, it focuses on Donegal and its dramatic coastline. It does have an incredible coastline. I've seen pictures. Oh, it's even more stunning in person towering cliffs and the wild Atlantic crashing against them. But what makes Donegal even more interesting is the blend of cultures you find there. Oh, right, because Ulster spans both the Republic and Northern Ireland. Exactly. So Donegal has this unique mix of Irish and British influences. And how does that show up? You can see it in the local music and crafts and even in the storytelling traditions. It's still Irish storytelling, but often with a slightly different flavor than what you'd find further south. So you're saying even within one county, you can see how Ireland's history has shaped its identity. Exactly. It's fascinating. And speaking of history. Our book mentions Belfast. The capital of Northern Ireland. And it talks about Belfast's maritime history, especially the Titanic. Belfast is a city that's gone through a lot of change. Well, it's had a complex history. It has. And its shipbuilding heritage, which the Titanic is a symbol of, is something the city is really proud of. But it's also a city that's had to work hard to overcome a difficult past. You're absolutely right. The fact that the Titanic Museum is one of Belfast's main attractions says a lot about how the city is coming to terms with its history. Both the triumphs and the tragedies. Exactly. Looking at all these counties laid out in this coloring book really highlights the diversity of Ireland. You're right. It's not just one thing. It's a mix of different landscapes, histories, and influences. And even though it's a children's book, 
it actually encourages you to dig deeper. Yeah, it's like a little trailhead leading you into a whole world of exploration. Exactly. You might see a picture of a castle and think, I want to learn more about that. Or read about a local festival and decide to plan a trip around it. That's the beauty of it. It sparks your curiosity. I have to admit, though, looking at all these counties also makes me wonder, how did they even come to be in the first place? Oh, that's a great question. The division of Ireland into counties has a long and fascinating history. So there's a story there. Absolutely. It's a story shaped by centuries of political changes, cultural shifts, and even geographical boundaries. Okay, I'm definitely ready to hear more about that. Well, then let's dive into that history. Oh, yes. All right, so imagine Ireland way back before counties as we know them. Okay, going way back. Yeah, we're talking ancient kingdoms and territories constantly shifting and changing as alliances formed and crumbled. Sounds kind of like a real-life Game of Thrones. Uh-huh. Yeah, there were definitely some power struggles going on. But then came the Anglo-Normans in the 12th century. Okay, so this is where the English influence starts to come in. Exactly. And they wanted a more organized system, you know, like they had back in England. All right, make it easier to manage. Exactly. So they started dividing the land into shires. And those shires eventually became the counties we know today. You got it. So these early counties were really all about control. Makes sense. They wanted to establish their authority. Exactly. They were usually centered around important towns or castles. So they acted as like administrative hubs. Right. And over time, as the Normans gained more power, more and more counties were created. Okay, but it wasn't just the Normans who shaped the counties. You're right. It was a gradual evolution. New counties were created as populations grew and territories were conquered. Or just to simplify things, I imagine. Yeah, sometimes it was just about making administration easier. But it wasn't always a peaceful process either. I bet there were a lot of disagreements. Oh, absolutely. Power struggles, boundary disputes, all sorts of things adding to the complexity. So these county lines weren't just drawn on a map. They were the result of real people and real events. Precisely. And then, of course, you have the division of Ireland in the 20th century. Right, which led to the creation of Northern Ireland. And that added another layer to the whole county system, with six counties becoming part of the UK. And that's why Ulster is split between the Republic and Northern Ireland. Exactly. It's a lasting reminder of that historical division. So you see, understanding how these counties came to be gives us a much deeper appreciation for the Ireland we see today. It's fascinating how something as seemingly simple as a county border yeah. can have so much meaning. It really does. It's a testament to how intertwined geography and history are. And that brings us back to our coloring book. Yeah. Which might seem like a simple tool, but it actually highlights something really crucial about Irish culture. What's that? It's the love for the land itself. Okay, I see what you mean. Even in these simple drawings, you get a sense of the rolling hills and the rugged coastlines. Exactly. And the book encourages kids to color in these images, yeah. you know, to engage with the landscape in a creative way. It's like it's fostering a sense of appreciation. And I think that's something that really resonates with the Irish people. They have a deep connection to the land. They do. There's a real sense of pride in its beauty and diversity. It's almost like the landscape itself is part of their identity. Right. And you know that actually ties into something we touched on earlier. What's that? The importance of storytelling in Irish culture. Right. I can see how the land itself would be a source of inspiration for all those myths and legends. Exactly. The landscape isn't just something to look at. It's something to experience something that fuels the imagination. It's like the stories themselves are rooted in the soil. And that's something you can feel in every county, whether you're exploring ancient ruins or listening to traditional music in a pub. So you're saying that connection to the land is always present no matter where you go in Ireland. It is. It's a constant thread that runs through the entire culture. And as we're talking about this, I'm realizing that our coloring book isn't just about facts and attractions. It's about something deeper. It's about capturing the spirit of Ireland. Fostering a sense of wonder and appreciation for the land, the history, the people. Exactly. And it's doing it in a way that's accessible to everyone, no matter their age or background. It's like a reminder that learning can be fun. And that even something as simple as a children's coloring book can spark a passion for exploration. I love that. This whole conversation has definitely changed how I think about Ireland. In what way? Well, it's not just a place on a map anymore. What is it then? It's more like a tapestry of stories, traditions, and landscapes. And those are all waiting to be discovered. You're right. 
And those discoveries can be as simple as finding a quiet spot to admire the view. Or as profound as connecting with the spirit of a place. A place that's been shaped by centuries of history. Exactly. So to our listener, we encourage you to embrace that sense of discovery. Let your curiosity be your guide. Don't be afraid to explore those lesser known corners of Ireland. Remember, every county has a story to tell. It's up to you to listen. And who knows, maybe you'll even find yourself inspired to pick up a coloring book. Maybe even create your own vision of Ireland. Because sometimes the most profound insights come from the simplest of sources. Well said. You know, it's, it's amazing to think about all the stories and traditions we've uncovered just by looking at this coloring book. Right. And we've really only just scratched the surface. Each of these counties is like a world unto itself. And that's what's so special about Ireland. It's a country where the past is always present. Woven into the fabric of everyday life. So thinking about our listener, someone who might be planning a trip or just fascinated by Ireland. Yeah. What would you say is the key takeaway from all of this? Hmm. I'd say it's about going beyond the typical tourist experience you know don't just focus on the big cities get out and explore exactly venture out into the countryside and immerse yourself in the character of each county and use resources like this coloring book not as a definitive guide but as a starting point right let it spark your curiosity exactly be open to those unexpected moments those hidden gems that you wouldn't find in a guidebook talk to the locals listen to their stories maybe even try your hand at a traditional craft or Learn a few steps of Irish dance. It's about experiencing Ireland with all your senses. Not just seeing it. And don't be afraid to go off the beaten path. Sometimes the most rewarding experiences come from those spontaneous detours. I think this deep dive has really changed how I think about Ireland. Oh yeah, in what way? Well, before it was just a place on a map. But now? Now it feels like a tapestry. A tapestry of? Of stories, traditions, and landscapes. All waiting to be discovered. So to our listener, we encourage you to embrace that sense of discovery. Let your curiosity be your guide. Explore those lesser known corners of this incredible island. Remember, every county has a story to tell. And it's up to you to listen. Who knows, maybe you'll even be inspired to pick up a coloring book yourself. And create your own unique vision of Ireland. Because sometimes the most profound insights come from the simplest of sources. That's a great point. Well, until next time.